What was on your mind when you chose to start riding a motorcycle? We can generally list a few key words like freedom and adventure, but safety is not normally top of the list. While talk of safety in the local bikers pub tends to either end up in an argument or the end of the conversation. Safety is often associated with wearing a high-vis jacket and following the rules. There is new thinking that challenges many long-held beliefs in how we can share the roads and enjoy our lifestyles while also improving our safety and skill levels in the process. The theory is that accidents are caused by a prediction failure, which leads to surprises. So, if we can reduce the surprises, we can avoid many accidents. Wouldn't it be nice if all of the roads were as beautiful and empty as this? Unfortunately, we only tend to find this one empty on cold, wet winter days. Pick a nice, sunny summer day and what we find looks more like this. Now we see an environment far closer to where we more typically do most of our riding, full of potential surprises. We have a mixture of road users occupying the same space, all trying to get on with their lives and enjoy their day. Nobody is looking for confrontation or to spoil another's trip, but the many potential interactions make surprises far more likely. While you will find many reports of accidents on these roads, as they are a focal point for a whole mix of activities, including other dangerous outdoor sports, people will travel here from all over the world just to enjoy these famous bends. It is inevitable that this road will be a black spot for accidents as these many activities come together. We often find free-range goats on the road here as well, just to make the game more interesting. Hopefully, here with the help of footage we have recorded in Thailand and the UK, we will share some tips on improving our prediction techniques. I hope that you enjoy the trip. Thailand is a beautiful country with amazing, friendly people. There are two main types of motorcyclists to be found on Thai roads. We have the big bike riders, many of whom invest a lot of time and money in their machines and kit. But the bulk of motorcycles on Thai roads are the smaller scooter styled ones used by locals and tourists for daily transport, much like bicycles are used in Europe and elsewhere. It's very easy to start judging the riding and driving abilities of many road users and to make assumptions about the lack of rules and enforcement. In the UK, road user training involves a significant amount of real world experience in a variety of traffic conditions, leading up to the driving test. In Thailand, there is no requirement for such a similar display of these vital road user skills at the time of test. Although things are starting to change, the focus has predominantly been on compliance with rules. You must wear a helmet. Motorcycles must keep left. You must not break the speed limit. While the motorcycle and the car test have required no real world driving skills beyond the physics of how the vehicle works and an understanding of basic rules via a theory test, the training is being conducted predominantly in off-road testing areas. It's nice to see this changing for cars. Some driving schools now are taking learner drivers out onto the roads, but it's still not a requirement for motorcycles, at least at the time of recording. This results in people applying coping strategies to deal with everyday encounters. Often these are taken from the bulk of their experience gained from the years spent as pedestrians. 
we also have another interesting difference among road users in Thailand. This is the very common belief among Thai people in karma and reincarnation. The majority of Thais make a link with the meaning of death being an aspect of a greater learning curve. If the time of their death is predetermined, then events will take place regardless of their actions. Given this belief, what purpose does a helmet serve? Why worry if there is anything around that blind bend? This young woman is far more concerned about her online connections than she is to the dangers around her, pulling away into a blind bend while looking constantly at her mobile phone. There is another explanation for the behaviour as well. The Thai people wish to avoid confrontation. In the UK, we focus a lot on observations when training, teaching people to look around themselves while on the move. We do see people giving way at junctions in Thailand, so prediction is happening. But if they can find an easier route, they will often choose to take it. People tend to pick a direction and go, leaving it to karma and the benevolence of spirits to protect them. This is not to defend the situation, it is only a suggestion as to why things are as they are. Yes, this can be a problem to us as other road users. However, apart from the abundance of potential surprises that constantly unfold around us, we can also take the information to update our prediction skills. We have spoken to a number of expats now living in Thailand. Many report finding driving and riding in the country has become easier over time. The main reason for this being that their prediction skills have improved with experience. Often our primeval fight or flight response can be our own worst enemy. This undertaking minibus surprised Carol. Her action was to accelerate, in other words, take flight. But watching the video would suggest that she could have reacted better by just braking and letting the minibus go ahead. Hindsight is great, but it does not help at the time of the surprise. Daps equal traps, and can go equals will go, are two useful phrases that can be applied to a variety of situations to help us predict surprises. Where there is a gap in traffic next to us or just ahead of us on the road, chances are that someone will move into it. Kids will be kids. The UK Highway Code suggests giving way to vehicles coming uphill on a single track road, as well as also giving way to oncoming vehicles before passing vehicles obstructing our lane. So either way here, Carol has right of way, not that this matters. Interactions like these are happening millions of times every day. We never know what is waiting around the next bend. Rules only work when people do not feel disadvantaged by them. If there is a quicker, easier route than the designated way, people will take advantage of it. Or do what seems right, regardless of the rules. Here the oncoming vehicles are being polite by moving over in their lane to give room to us. But in doing so, this leads them to cross the solid line of a cycle lane potentially putting them in conflict with cyclists.
just present three lanes and people get confused as to where to go, so lane discipline will lapse. There are not many roundabouts in Thailand. This one is the only one on the island of Koh Samui. It's not a surprise that many people do not understand how to use it. You have been taught how to use them, so often it comes down to who is the biggest. But due to the lack of rules, people are often not surprised when others do not give way. Thus, there are not as many surprises as one may expect. In the UK, a learner will be taught the basics of roundabouts as soon as they start using the roads. This is from the 1991 Driver Standards Agency Motorcycle Manual, laying down the basics for roundabout use. This is even earlier, from the Star Rider Training Manual Carol first used in the 1980s. Notice that the system that riders were expected to apply through the roundabouts. There are similar pages for both right and left turns. Some examiners at the time would fail people for a missed observation, even when it may not serve any use. Things have improved. The motorcycle test now requires the examiner to follow the rider for a 40 minute assessment ride. But there is still a gap between test standard and the reality of real life surprises that we find on the roads. Roundabouts are very useful junctions. When used correctly, they are very good at enabling traffic flow. There are thousands across the UK, from circles of paint on the road, which we call mini roundabouts, to the large multi-lane grassed banks. Although they have been standard for years, it does not stop road planners from messing with them and adding a new element of danger. Here we have a spiral roundabout. Rather than staying close to the roundabout centre when turning right and then branching off left after we pass the exit prior to our own, these roundabouts spiral outwards towards the exit, putting us far closer to the dangers of approaching traffic. To address this, we can stay wide. Thus, to stay safe, we must break the rules. Here. Carol is leaving an escape route to her left, just in case a vehicle in the left lane decides to head right. But people are still surprised by the appearance of a motorcycle. Here the driver had already decided to go before Carol pulled away. The driver had thought it was safe to do so because the majority of vehicles were not heading their way. Things go right and things go wrong for the same reasons. The red car could easily have thought it was safe to go, as Carol was hidden by the bus turning left and the van in front of her. Again, surprised by the bike, the lesson here is Carol's lizard brain, sounding the horn, causes the car to brake, possibly making the situation worse, but it's easy to judge with hindsight. Mm -hmm. 
Here, the black car confuses Carol with its positioning. At first, it appeared like it was going left, but the indicator suggested something else. Surprise. Here is a mini roundabout. Once again, someone is confused by how a roundabout works and goes and applies their brakes. Now for a bit of British filtering. Carol has taken advantage of the bike's acceleration to make progress into a gap, but the issue is that coming out of nowhere means that this driver might not see us. Watching the wheels to see if they are turning offers a quick clue to his intentions, but Carol takes a wide line just to give some room if the car decides to go. Dynamic Risk Assessments This is a name given to something that we all do to some extent every day, looking both ways while crossing the road for example. But we can take it further and apply little adjustments to improve our riding. Our position within the lane can be adjusted to aid us in so many ways. A common error is to cut across the apex of right hand bend, which puts our heads over the centre line and dangerously close to oncoming traffic while also limiting our view of the road ahead. Moving over to the right for a left bend gives us a better view, but also puts us in danger from oncoming vehicles. Moving left gives us a better view of the right hand bends, but going too far to the left can put us into the gravel and rubbish collecting at the side of the road. By putting all of the information together, such as tree lines, gaps that give views of the road ahead, and other subtle clues can assist us in avoiding surprises. This would be a lovely bend to scrape a peg, but we have to be aware of what could be coming the other way. Notice here that Carol is taking an odd line through these bends. Only when we rewind, zoom in and turn up the contrast can we see the reason for this. A line of oil at the centre of the road, spilled by one or many of the other vehicles that have struggled up this hill, not what we want on the tyres when leaning through the twisties. Now let's look at a complex multi-way junction. On the approach to this giveaway junction, views are limited. Carol first looks left and then ahead to where she can see early indicators whether it is clear to go. She then slowly moves forward as the right view becomes clear. Once checked, it's a con confirmation glance left and ahead before going, but every time is different.
Another point to make is not to create or become part of a situation unfolding ahead. No good making things worse. Here, Carol could see vehicles waiting to overtake the parked lorry. The lights are on red. Identified earlier, it's easy to wait. From a Buddhist point of view, she earns merit from being kind to others in the process. Everyone is happy. Filter or not to filter? That is the question. Nothing wrong with getting to the front of the queue, but not if that is going to lead us to being stuck and blocking the road. Best to wait until we can be fairly sure we can make it to a safe pull-in. Putting ourselves in between lorry sandwiches has always been a problem for bikers. It's very tempting here for Carol to accelerate through the gap as the two motorway lanes merge. But remember, gaps equal traps. It is preferable to wait and then move to pass on the right. Even the same junction can change with every visit. This one being particularly nasty because it has limited visibility to the right. But the routine is the same. Check what we can see on approach, edging out until we can see as far as we can into the blind bend, and then looking towards where we are going as we move off. Even when helping a fellow biker who's broken down, the first thing to look for is our own safety. Here, this man's clutch cable oh, had snapped. Up. We can fix it with the aid of a solderless nipple. It is always crucial to carry tea bags as well. First, we must move to somewhere where we can safely work on it. When do you spot the girl on the bicycle? Here is an example of making connections. Two clear warnings here, the official solid line up the middle of the road, while also the line of spirit houses along the side. Both clear signals of the hazard. Here it is the hidden road ahead as we cross the brow of the hill. Recognising these connections is what limits surprises. I hope you enjoyed the footage. If you are interested in where it came from, here is a list of the main locations. If you would like to discuss the points further, then please contact us at Thai Safe Rider regarding Thailand, or Kevin who runs Survival Skills Motorcycle Training in the UK. The No Surprise No Accident website also well worth a look. Thank you for watching and ride free.